But so if we were to take some of these strategic directions and thinkings and were to design a next generation Go, the trade-offs are kind of interesting to think about relative to what we do on Quest and different things. Uh, obviously, the top one is better battery life. Now, you can get that from literally having a bigger battery or a battery of a higher spec. Uh, or we can get it by having more advanced silicon that's more power efficient, writing better code, doing lots of things, cutting the bloat out of it, uh, but also faster charging. I, it's great to hear that people have a device that they're upset that they've used Go earlier and it's not fully charged up because they want to use it again. That's a good problem to have. You know, comfort, we can still make uh, we can still make very large strides on. I don't think that we as a company have really taken that as a top-line priority. It's all been about packing the technology in and then somehow wrapping a comfortable shape around that technology. But if we start getting to a point where we're willing to sacrifice some technology in some cases in the name of comfort, for a lot of people, that's going to be the right trade-off. I still think that there are exciting things with ultra-lightweight displays, and I am... You know, it's great to see people physically hacking with Goes. It's a good platform for that because it's mostly self-contained there. You can carve away plastic. And there's uh, some great stuff that people have done uh, making more comfortable, like changing it to halo straps, cutting away a lot of the weight. These are kind of exciting things. And I've been chastising some of our internal teams. It's like, get with the program or some, you know, some guy in a garage is going to outdo us on the important comfort metrics. <laughs> Uh, obviously, more storage in, uh, internally, so you can store more videos, although USB helps, certainly fixing the problem so it works uh, you know, across the board and reliably. But it's very interesting to come to questions about six degree of freedom tracking, 4K displays, uh, you know, really good tracked controllers. These are all pure goods if they don't have costs, but they do have costs. They trade off in power draw, uh, in, you know, in expense for the product, development time on some of these things. So it's not completely clear. Uh, I think that one of the problems that people do have with Go is, of course, controller drift. You know, the recentering that is a completely unnatural action for people to have to do. It's a failure of the product that the controller does not stay pointing the way your hand is pointing. Uh, that may be actually one of the stronger reasons, even if somebody does nothing but sit in Netflix with an application like this, having the controller always there instead of coming back an hour later and it's off screen and you need to remember to recenter to bring it in, in front of you, that's a good argument for having cameras and some kind of tracking. As well as, of course, the thing that if you're used to VR, you know you just kind of sit there and let the head model do its work, but somebody else is there, they're like, oh, I'm in this, uh, this ski lodge, I'm going to lean forward and look at that magazine, and that's incredibly uncomfortable when you don't have six degree of freedom tracking. Um, Resolution-wise, honestly, by this point, I expected us to have 4K displays, but the phone industry made the surprisingly rational choice that 4K displays don't actually matter in that form factor for anything. I expected specsmanship and the kind of warfare there to carry it over well past the point of rationality, but it turned out not to be the case. I, but still, so VR companies are going to have to foot the bill for this next generation of display density increases. And they're, they're in the pipeline. Uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly which products they, they wind up landing in. Uh, then another thing with cameras is hand tracking. Do we, do we want the controller at all if all you're doing is selecting movies and a few different things like this? But hand tracking has significant uh, computational costs as well. And you get into some of the ones that become almost Go-specific, like uh, the idea of, do we want an ambient light sensor so that we can tell that you're using it in a dark room and you don't want the screen blasting you? Because it turns out that's a real-world use case. A lot of people, uh, you know, in our user studies, we've had people that say, yes, I use my Go when I, I'm sitting in bed, my wife is asleep, and I want to, you know, browse the web or something while I, without disturbing them. And that's something that I, is an unusual, it's not something we expected as a common use case, but people are actually doing that. Another one like sunburn protection. It is an issue that if you take a go, nice flat face, you set it down on a picnic table, uh, the leaves blow out of the way, the sun shines down, and you've basically burned a hole in your LCD screen. And that's, we have warnings about this, and we've strengthened these warnings, but it is happening to people. This is something that if you use this device as a part of your life, you're carrying it around, you're setting it down in places, even setting it down by a window with the sun streaming straight in can be a problem. There's technical fixes that we can do for this. I, you know, people have proposed putting an LCD layer that could darken on top of this. I'm, 
Maybe it is a matter, though, of the front face shouldn't be flat, so you're not ever inclined to set it down like that. There's, there's other possibilities. But um, So Go was originally a side project. Quest was started before Go existed, and we had this notion that, oh, it'll just be like a Gear VR, and it'll be easy. And of course, it wasn't, and it was an enormous amount of work, and we didn't ship it when we initially hoped we would. Uh, but I'm still very happy that we did that. But most of the focus now has switched over to getting Quest out the door. And in many ways, Quest is the VR device that people dreamed about. It's this standalone six degree of freedom tracked with the, uh, with the hand presence on the controllers. And it does all of this like people want, but it's twice the price of Go. Um, you know, it has, there's a lot more stuff there. It's a heavier headset and there's, we haven't had time to feed back in most of the, the learnings that we had from Go because these projects were all kind of going simultaneously. Uh, one thing that did come back in, we learned some from the Go facial interface work that Quest is, uh, is adopting. Kind of earlier ones were less comfortable than the later ones that have come out. But the, the real bet on this is that the Six Degree of Freedom tracked headset and controllers, the kind of rift parity on this is a magical point for people, that this is something that's going to radically change things. 